Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Discrete Math. Um, of course, I got everything working and then suddenly it disconnected just as I was about to connect, um, which is always fun. Uh, hopefully it won't do that again. Um, I do have a backup though. I, I do have the, uh, if the internet disconnects again, I do have the little, um, uh, um, um, whatchamacallit, the little uh, thingamajigger that, uh, the jetpack. So if it happens again, I can hook up on the jetpack. All right, so how's everybody doing today? Kind of a hard quiz. Um, so uh, today I actually worked out all the examples in advance, well, most of them. Uh, but don't give me too much credit. Um, I'm using the same example I did last year. Um, um, any questions? Okay. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a big, I, I, this is, you know, I, I didn't like, game tw uh, stream as a gamer on Twitch, so I don't know. Is there, like, something you're supposed to say if it dis gets disconnected and then you come back? Is there some, you know, like, if you're on YouTube, you're supposed to say, and, you know, subscribe, ring the bell, and give me a thumbs up type thing, but I don't know if there's something you're supposed to do on Twitch uh, for that. Um, so, you know, someone fill me in on these things. All right, so the quiz. Um... Um, so yeah, so the, um, let's look at it now. I haven't figured out. So it occurred to me after I set up the quiz, which was a pain in the neck to set up because it's, you know, web assign that what I should have done is like made you put them in, in like blocks of three or blocks of four. Um, I didn't want to do like one at a time because that's just annoying. Although, you know, technically I, I maybe could have. Um, I haven't figured out everything there is to do about that, um, so I'll play with it before I give you the test. I just threw my pen. Um, it's one of those days. Um, so um, let's just look at it here. Um, so for partial credit, um, there will be... Um, there will be partial credit. Uh, the person's going to have to do it by hand. It's going to be not fun for my grader, um, but it will be done. Uh, so here's what I got. I add one to every one of these, and I get P, N, O, J, B, etc. cetera. Uh, how do we feel about that one, one to five? Um, so as I said, if you messed up the little places, if you got one of the other answers, like if you went backwards or something like that, um, we're going to try to do partial credit. It just, it will take a while to get this, to, to make this happen. Um, as, as I said, the, the, it's easier to do these on paper than it is on the auto thing, but you know, we have only paper, we don't have paper. We have just the auto thing. All right, so here was the idea behind this one. So I put down all of the characters. And then I go, okay, well, I know I put down my crib at the end. So my crib is the fact that I know the last word of this was changes. So I put down my crib at the end. And using the crib, I get the key. And it doesn't have to be the perfect key, right? So the key was not that. I just have to know where to move everything. Um, oh, okay. So apparently I'm supposed to tell you to click the bell icon to receive a notification every time I go on live. Huh. Um, okay, so S goes to S. So there was a zero change. So I'm starting at the end and then going backwards. So when I took D and I decrypted it to E, I did a plus one. So the key, if I wanted to know what the key was, the original key to encode was zero, then minus one, which is actually plus 25. But the point is I don't actually care about the original key. Um, I only care about how to change my thing. So to go from E to G, I add two. My original key would have had um, 24 here because it would have been minus two. Let me 
this equal side should be the one. Okay. To get here, I subtract 2. To go from P to N, I subtract 2. That meant that the original key had a 2 in it. And to go from B to A, I subtract 1. That means the original key had a 1 in it. So this turned out to be my original key. Of course, it's, it's, I'm starting from the back, but who cares? All right, I've got, uh, so my original key, I would have had 24, 25, 0, 1, 2 if I was starting from the front. Okay, so, but I don't actually need that. Since I know the key length is five characters, I just go right to left across this thing, right? So I just go step by step. Okay, this was a zero. This is a, so I just read it. Zero, one, two, negative two, negative one. Zero, one, two, negative two, negative one. Zero, one, two, negative two, negative one. Zero, one, two, and then I'm out. So to get this P, I'm going to add 2. Well, okay, so P, let's shift it to, we're going to go to R. G, I go back to, I get E. W, I get back when I get that. This is, stays in E. M, I'm going to add, that's an N, P, I'm going to add 2, that gives me the R, C going back 2 is an A, X going back 1 is a W, this is an R again, adding 1 to Z of Z, I go to A, And adding 2 to U, I go to W again. So I get, in plain text, I get war. War never changes. How do we feel about that 1 to 5? And as I said, um, we're, we we got to do something for partial credit. I just I uh, that's going to make the 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 person who um, who grades it unhappy. Noah, would you like to grade a quiz? Um, so you know, um, because it's going to have to be partial credit done by hand. Um, I'm going to try to figure out a way to make it work for the test, but I don't know if I can. All right. Um, it could be that the answer is off. It could be that you have a space, um, in a wrong, in a spot that I didn't anticipate. Um, it could be that the answer is incorrect in the quiz system. Um, I will have to look at it. Um, these are, again, these are hard to code into the computer to make the computer do the grading for these. So if I messed up, I may have, I may have messed up somewhere. Um, I'll check. All right. Okay. Now notice from these So notice if I have a number shared between two people, I have a key. So last time, um, last time we talked about this, 
we went over private keep cryptography and we talked about the problem of crypts. So if I know what some piece of the plain text is supposed to be, I can usually get at the original text. It may be computationally difficult. It may involve inventing a computer, which is what they did to decrypt Enigma. But we talked about these things. We talked about a couple of problems with these systems, like the fact that users um, are usually your biggest problem. Um, we also talked about the fact that um, uh, it's easy to add illusion of security without actually adding more security. But the big problem for private keys, the big problem for private keys is that we have to have some way to share the key privately. So how do you feel about that one to five, that the big problem with this thing, with this system is that we have to have a way to share the, 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 we have to have a way to share the, the, um, the, uh, the private key. All right. Uh, people are asking, how did I choose the numbers for the for the vignette cipher? Um, I, I I I found them because I had a crib. Okay, so on the last one, I had a crib. Oops. I knew what was. I knew the last bit of plain text. I knew it. It was in orange. So I was able to solve for the for the for the way. I was able to figure out how they had to be decrypted by going right to left at the end. So an S became an S, that means this thing was a zero. A D became an E, that means that was a plus one and so on and so forth. So that's how I figured out what was what. Okay. But as I said, this idea of the big problem is we have to find a way to share a key. And that's what we're going to talk about now. Oops, there's stuff in the thing that should be there. Um, that's not it. So in order to do this, we're going to talk about the Diffie-Hellman algorithm. And the point of the Diffie-Hellman algorithm, oops, when I can get to it, Let me get rid of this because that no longer applies. That no longer applies. And today is the 13th, not the, this was originally going to be an earlier lecture and then I never changed the date. Uh, we'll just delete that. Okay. So what we want to talk about today is we want to do expo, we want to do Diffie Hellman. So we need a way we need a way to share a secret over a public network. That's what we need. And so the original kind of diff, the original public key cryptography, well, not the original original, there was one before, um, but it's there's a polynomial algorithm to, to, to undo it, so nobody uses it. Um, but this was, uh, Diffie and Hellman, both are still alive. Um, one of them, I think is at Oxford. I don't remember where the other one is. Um, but this was their thought. We want a way to generate a secret key. And so what we comes down to is I need a way to make a number. Okay. So I need a way. to share a number. But I actually don't have to share a number. That's a misnomer. That would be the old way of thinking. In reality, what I re uh, Ooh, my voice broke. In reality, what I need a way 
to wind up with the same number for two different users. Okay. I need a way to wind up with the same number for two different users. So here's the idea. I've got two people, Alice and Bob. Okay. Alice is going to, they're going to have some public information. In this case, a prime number and a generator. And then they're going to keep some piece of information that they don't send to each other. Okay? And the idea is what they're going to wind up with is a shared secret. Okay, that they can then use for private key. So one to five, how do we feel about the idea about what's going to happen? I'm going to have information that I reveal to the world. Alice and Bob are both going to keep something private to themselves. And then they're going to wind up with a shared secret. And the reason this works... is it is much easier to do an exponent computation than a log computation. So in order to do this, we need to talk about exponents. Okay. Exponents work like this. All right. They work exactly like you expect them to work. All right. So let's do in z5 2 cubed equals what 2 times 2 times 2 equals 4 times 2 equals 6 equals 1 2 to the 7th equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. One more. Times 2. I know that this piece is going to be 4. I know this piece is going to be 1. So I can ignore that. I know this piece is going to be 1, so this becomes 2. Note that 2 to the 7th does not equal 2 to the 7 mod 5. Those things are completely different things, right? 2 to the 7th equals 1. 2 to the 7 mod 5 equals 2 to the 2 equals 4. In other words, I cannot mod the exponent. Did I just do something stupid? I did. I added instead of multiplied. 
That makes me feel embarrassed. Sorry about that. It's one of those days. That should be an 8, which equals 3. So that makes this... Let's fix that. This still holds. It's just incorrect now. So let's do this. So this would be 2 times 2. This is 8. That's 3. Excuse me while I do this. Okay, better. So 3 times 2 is 6. That makes this 6. And that equals 1. Thank you. So let's do that again. 2 to the 3 equals 3. 2 to the 4 equals 1. 2 to the 4 was originally what I wanted to do. Sorry about that. All right. So that was the thing in my notes. So 2 to the 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm trying to do this without like looking at my notes actively. So it looks impressive. And I just screwed it up. Um, so this right here, how do we feel 1 to 5 about 2 to the 4 being 1? Sorry about the 6 thing. Right, so 2 to the 4 equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which equals... This right here is 2 cubed, so that means this equals 3, 8 times 2, which is the same thing as 3 times 2, which is the same thing as 6, which equals 1. Okay? In Z5. So that means this piece right here equals 1. I can ignore it. And what's left is 3. Okay. So 2 to the 7 equals 3, while 2 squared equals 4. Whew. Better. How do we feel about it now, 1 to 5? Well, 6 equals 1 because I'm in Z5. Okay. Now, here's the problem. In order to go the other way... Um, someone's informing you that there's a way to do polls in Discord. Noah, can you figure that out? I, I think you have uh, privileges on that thing. So maybe we can do them both on stream, on Discord. I'm sorry, there's a, apparently someone in Twitch chat is saying there's a way to do polls on Twitch. So if, can you play with that? Um, you should have moderator privileges in Twitch. Maybe we can get them going in both. And by we, I mean, of course, you. Okay. So I've got 2 to the 4 here does not equal... So 2 to the 7th equals 3, while 2 squared equals 4. Now, here's an interesting thing about this. 2 to the 4 equals 1. So let's look at this. Let's make a little chart about... This is in Z5. Let's see what happens as I go. All right, so 2 to the 0 equals 1. 2 squared equals uh, 4. 2 cubed, we already said, that equals 3. And 2 to the 4th equals 1 again. And notice how this repeats. Okay, so now I'm going to do 2 to the 5th, that's going to be 
One, oops, I forgot two to the first. Duh. So one, two, four, three, right? Two to the zero is one. Two to the first is two. Two squared is four. Two cubed is three. Two to the fourth is one. And now it's going to repeat. So two to the fifth is going to be two. Two to the sixth is going to be four. Two to the seventh is going to be three. Two to the eighth is going to be one again, and so on and so forth. But notice this has a, the three times two came from, okay, so eight was three. We just established that eight equals three. So that means that these three numbers together multiply to be the three. And three times two, I multiply another two is six. So that was this number to this number. Okay. So this thing cycles. But it does not cycle modulo Five. It cycles modulo four. One to five, how do we feel about that? And it doesn't always have to cycle in minus one, by the way. But it's not clean like addition was. And multiplication okay it's not going to cycles at the the, the the cyclic things are not going to be that well look it repeats to four but it repeats every fourth time instead of like addition or multiplication would repeat every fifth right So for multiplication, it's 2 times 0 equals 0, 2 times 1 equals 2, 2 times 3 equals 6 equals 1, 2 times 4 equals, um, what am I doing here? I'm doing, where am I? I'm modulo 5. Okay, 8 equals 3, 2 times, f I just keep going up, you know. 2 times 2 is the one I'm missing. Thank you. 2 times 2 equals 4. 2 times 3 equals 6. 2 times 4 equals 3. And then 2 times 5 equals 5 equals 0. Well, equals 10, but whatever. So this thing cycles every 5. But this, the exponent, is cycling every four. How do we feel about that? Let me ask that again, one to five. Notice what's going on here. It's, 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 it's not clean like multiplication was for prime numbers. And it's worse because it may cycle every two or something else that divides four. And what that means is What it basically means is that it's computationally hard for a computer to go backwards. Basically, you have to print out a chart. Now, there are some um, things. Um, 
Uh, it's not bad. It's actually good. It's the thing we're going to exploit. But it means that in order to go backwards, you basically have to print out a chart. Okay? I can exploit that. I should say we. I should say Diffie and Hellman. Can exploit that. To do cryptography. Okay. Um, an update on the polling situation. Apparently, only affiliates and partners can do it. Uh, for that, um, I have to look. I, I am ranked to be an affiliate. Um, but I, I don't want to do affiliate because it does ads. So um, I assume they want money in order to do it. So I'll find out if there's another way to get that feature. So here's how Diffie-Hellman works. Okay. So I've got Alice and Bob. Okay, we're going to pick a prime number and then we're going to pick a generator for that. So Alice and Bob are going to publicly share share a prime number and an exponent that reaches every number in Zp, a prime number p, and a and a exponent that reaches every number in Zp except zero. Okay, so let me show you how that works. Um, so what I'm going to do is make this go here and this go here so that I can do this on both. All right, so now let's look at the number 11. Uh, dee 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 dee. Um, all right, so I have this little program that does this for me, and I'll post this program in 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 the uh, in the um, um, in on uh, the notes in the code section for the, the 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 where I put the code. But this is what it does. Okay, it takes two arguments. And it um, outputs, I input two numbers, and it outputs a chart of all the exponents uh, generated by that number in that Z. So for instance, here, let's start with the one that I just did in class is this one, okay? So I chose two here, and I generated this chart, and so my base was two, and my, my mod was five. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do, I'm gonna ask it for five using base two. And notice how base, I should say they share a, 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 a base, not an exponent. They're sharing a base. So notice here that what I've done is I've, when I put in this thing, two to the zero, equals one. I'm pointing at the thing like you can see it, right? So two to the zero equals one. Two to the first equals uh, two. Two squared is four. Two cubed is three. And two to the fourth again is one. 
So one to, we, one to five, how do you feel about what this program is doing? It's taking a base and a mod, and it's generating everything that can be done by that. How do we feel about that? Yes, the lecture today is on the exam. And please stop asking me that. Okay. So I can do this a number of times, right? I want to generate this table here again. I can do it like this. If I use three as my base, it generates the exact same thing. If I use four as my base, it doesn't. You see how 4 to the 0 equals 1, 4 to the 1st equals 4, and 4 squared equals 1 again. So 4 does not gen so so 4 as a base does not generate everything but 0. So these numbers here if I use them as bases, if I use 2 as a base or 3 as a base, I get four numbers that I can reach, every number but 0 in Z5. However, if I picked four as my base, I would only reach these two numbers. And of course, if I pick one as my base, I only reach, well, one. Because one times one times one times one is always one. Okay. So I'm going to pick a G for my base that reaches everything. Okay. In this case, I'm going to choose the prime number 7. I'm sorry, I'm going to choose the prime number 11 and the generator 7. So 7 is going to be my base. All right? So in this case, what's going to happen here is that we're going to share this information. We are going to share the number 7... Uh, publicly and the number 11. So we're going to share prime 7, sorry, prime 11 and base 7. Uh, how do I do this? There we go. I should have copied. There we go. So in this case here, so Alice and Bob publicly share prime p equals 11 and share base g equals 7. Now, ignore the fact that 7 is prime here. That's incidental. This was the smallest numbers that I could make it work out so that none of the numbers wound up being the same in the keys. Okay, 1 to 5, how do we feel about that? P. This is a P. I'm going to choose prime number P and base G and a base G. All right. So now what's going to happen um, How do I make it go back to the thing it was on before? Okay, there. All right, so now what's going to happen is that Alice and Bob are both going to compute a private integer. So Alice, um, and I should note that the tradition is to use blue for things that are public and red for things that are private. Okay. Alice 
Alice chooses secret number five. I'm going to write A equals five. And Bob is also going to choose a secret. Um, say six. Okay. Now, Alice computes Okay, seven to the fifth mod 11. So because I want to do this like this, I'm going to do seven to the fifth mod 11. Now, I look over at my chart, and 7 to the 5th mod 11 is 10. Bob computes seven. To the six, that was his secret key. Mod 11. And according to our chart, all these pens, you should be able to click the eraser to change pens. But you can't. So seven to the six mod 11 is four. Okay. So Alice sends 10 to Bob in plain text over the internet. Bob sends Four to Alice in plain text over the internet. So, how do we feel about what's going on here now, one to five? What's been shared? Okay. So, so far, the two pieces of private information that haven't gone over the internet are the five and the six. Everything else is public. Bob has no way of knowing that Alice chose five, and Alice has no way of noting that Bob chose six. Okay. They have no idea that that's happened. Okay. Um, people aren't like telling me they're on board or asking questions. 
Okay. Alice is going to compute the following. Alice takes that Bob's 4 and combines it with her secret 5 in the following way. Alice, oops. So Alice computes S equals, this is an S, not a 5, your secret. Now Bob's public, Bob sent 4, and Alice sent, and Alice's secret was 5. Mod 11. Okay, so this was the number Bob sent to Alice. Alice's secret. And 4 to the 5th mod 11 is 4 times, um, uh, let's see, nope, there's no quick way to do it. Uh, so 4 to the 5th mod 11 is 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. So let's see, is there, uh, and I'm doing mod 11. So this one is going to be 16, which equals 5. Uh, let's see, 60, so 5 times 4 is 20, 20 mod 11 is, uh, that's 9, that doesn't really help, uh, so we'll do 5 here, so 5 times 5 is 25, uh, mod 11, which equals, um, Track 11, let's see. 14. That's a little bit better. Uh, which equals 3. So now I've got 3 times 4. Um, I'm going to wind up with 12. Which equals 1. Okay. Now notice that this was shared over a private network. That, that, that this is private because there's no way for anyone in the middle to know that Alice chose five. One to five, how do we feel about that? Okay. Now, what Bob does? Bob computes S equals, okay, now Bob's private key, I'm sorry, the number that Alice sent to Bob, which was 10, to the sixth mod 11. The mod is public. Okay, so 10 to the 6 mod 11. Okay, so this is, so I'm going to do voodoo because I don't feel like computing this forever. So 10 equals negative 1 mod 11. Correct? I go backwards 1 instead. How do you feel about that 1 to 5, that 10 equals negative 1? in Z11. Okay. I just went back one instead of going forward. Negative one to the sixth equals one.
Okay. So all I did was I went backwards one and computed anyway because it was faster than going forwards. That's all I did. Um, and I could have done the same trick, um, uh, by the way, uh, here. I just didn't. I mean, yeah. So I could have done the same trick type. Uh, uh, no, I couldn't have done it right there, right? Because I'm mod 11, not mod. Never mind. I could do it right here. I could have actually done, you know, 11 minus 4 here and computed the fifth, but that was a bigger pain in the neck. But here it's easy, right? This is negative 1. Negative 1 to the 6 is 1. So what happened there? Uh, don't don't let that throw you if you're if you're not. Uh, 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 don't let that throw you. By the way, if um, if you're not happy about the negative one, just know that ten to the six mod eleven is one. Okay. So how do we feel about that one to five? What just happened? These two people computed one as a key without ever spent sending their initial numbers over the internet. Okay? They both arrived at the number one without doing anything. Without sharing that. Okay, so the question is, why does this work? Okay. Let's do a quick different one. Let's do, uh, let me do another one, uh, another example. Let me just do another one to kind of firm this up. Okay, this time, Alice is going to choose 7, Bob is going to choose 9, they're going to choose 13 as their prime. All right, so another example, uh, Alice and Bob agree to uh, do uh, 13 as their prime. And um, uh, two is the generator. Okay, so let me just uh, bounce this up real fast. I think this will generate everything. Yes. Uh, there we go. There we go. So now what I've done is I've generated that same chart I did before. Okay. So I'm going to do 13 and 2. Now this time, I'm going to let Bob is going to choose 7. So Bob's private is, uh, let's see, uh, Bob's going to choose nine, Alice is going to choose seven. Let me get rid of the word private there. Okay. So they're both going to compute. So Alice computes. So Alice computes 5 to the 7 mod 13. And Bob computes 11 to the 9 mod 13. Uh. Oh, I need to say what they send. Sorry. Duh. So Alice uh, sends um, 
2 to the 7 mod 13, which equals 11. And Bob sends 2 to the 9th mod 13, which according to our chart is 5. Yep. Okay. And then Alice computes 5 to the 7 mod 13. And Bob computes 11 to the 9 mod 13. Okay. And then this is going to equal uh, 5 to the 7th, 8. And this one is going to equal 8. How do I know? Because I just plugged them into my calculator. All right. So how do we feel about that one to five? I now have an algorithm that will share a secret that I never sent over the internet. Why does it work? Okay. Here's why it works. It works. Notice that 11 Notice, I'm going to use Alice's number here. 11 equals g to the a mod p. Okay. So Bob is going to compute 11 to the 9 mod 13. Okay. Which is the same thing, right? So 11 here equals g to the a mod p. So that was 11 equal 2 to the 7 mod 13. Okay. So this right here, 11 to the 9th mod 13, is the same thing as 2 to the 7 mod 13 to the 9th mod 13. And then notice... Five equals two to the nine mod thirteen. So when Alice computes, I get five to the seven mod thirteen, which is what Alice computed, is the same thing as two to the ninth mod thirteen to the seventh mod. 13. How do we feel about that 1 to 5?
Alice actually computes S here, so I, I should make that clear. Uh, so this is Bob computes S. And then this right here is what goes on in the background. So what happened was this. Oh, I am way over time. I am sorry. I'm about 20 minutes over. Am I? Oh, no, no, no. I've still got 10 minutes. Whew. Good. Okay. Um, so what happened is that each was actually equal to this. 2 to the 7, 9. But both computations are equal to 2 to the 7 times 9 mod 13. Okay? Remember this stuff about exponents, right? If I have a, if I have, let's do, uh, if I have c to the a to the b, that equals c to the a times b. c to the a times c to the b equaled c to the a plus b. And this is the key right here. This number can be computed without knowing what the pieces were that made it. Questions? Yeah, so Alice and Bob share some information, right? So what is public? Okay. They agreed on what? They agreed on 13. They agreed on 2. I think I call this one G. All right. Alice's public number, which was uh, 11, and uh, Bob's public number, which was five. Okay, what was private was um, uh, seven and nine. Which one was which? Uh, Alice's was seven, so um, And then the other one was eight. Right, and then both computed
Okay. So how do we figure that out? So how do we feel about that? One to five. Okay. Now let's say Eve wants to crack it. Okay. Let's say Eve wants to crack it. She needs the public information. And she needs the chart. for the prime and uh, generator that Alice and Bob used. Okay, and those are public information. Those are just math. Okay? So let's see what, when, what happened here. If I want to crack it, this is the information I've got. I only know this stuff right here. Uh, oops. There we go. This is what I have. The other piece of information I need is this chart. Which chart am I using? This one right here. Copy, paste. So the NSA has on its computer this little chart for small and for sufficiently small polynomial numbers. Okay. So how does Eve crack it? Eve cracks it Eve looks at the chart and of 13 2, right? 13 2's the base, 13's here. This is G. This is P. And she looks at the chart and she says, okay, well, Alice sent three. Alice sent 11. So her private key, which would be called log base two of 11 in uh, Z13 right so she looks at her chart Alice sent 11 so 11 Alice must have chosen 7 because here's 11 and that means that Alice chose 7 as her key Likewise, Bob sent five, so his private number is 
was. Oops, that's the wrong one. Nine. Okay, so Alice computes. Um, 2 to the 7 times 9 mod uh, um, 13 and has their secret. But this depends on Alice having the chart. Okay, so what happens if Alice chose a one? What happens if these if these people shared a one thousand digit prime number? Okay, how much computation would it take to generate this chart? Because remember, Alice and Bob don't actually need to generate the whole chart. Okay, they only need to generate the 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 pieces that they need of it because they know their private keys. But if I don't know the private keys, I have to generate the entire chart. One to five, how do you feel about this? Oh yeah, Eve computes that and has their secret, I'm sorry. Right, I have to have the chart in order to do this. Eve has to have the Eve. Yes, Eve. That should be Alice. That should be Eve. But Eve must have the chart. Right. That's the only way she can do it. Now, here's the thing. We think the NS. So there's a an error message that you can get called weak weak Diffie Hellman exchange. This was a real problem. Um, uh, uh, weak Diffie Hellman key. Uh, this was a real problem about five years ago. It'll come up again as another one. I should say 10 years ago now. Okay, it was called weak Diffie Hellman exchange care error. And you can actually see it. If you go. Like, if you just Google that, and you'll see all kinds of things. Weak Diffie-Hellman key exchange with connecting to whatever. Okay? Uh, exchange key. You can Google this. Um, and the reason why this message exists, okay, the reason why this message exists is because we think the NSA has spent the millions of dollars required to generate charts for every thousand digit prime number, right? So we're now in the 2000, 3000, 4000, 5, we think that they've spent the money. Uh, and it's, it's, it's not a few million, it's millions and millions. But um, if, you know, the Snowden stuff is to be believed, they've spent the money um, and generated all these charts. So if you have a weak key, Right? If your prime doesn't have enough digits, the NSA has one of the charts. So there's this error message that you can get called weak Diffie Hellman key exchange. Uh, I should say key exchange, not exchange key. Uh, weak Diffie Hellman key exchange when your, your prime number is not big enough. Your prime number is not big enough. Because remember, the, the big weakness in this thing is that you don't have to generate this every time you want to break the key. You only have to generate these tables once, and then they're lookup tables, right? So your, your prime number has to be big enough 
right? Your, your G doesn't have to be big. Your G can usually be two, but your prime number has to be big enough that they that they haven't spent the money yet to uh, to generate all of the log charts for that particular uh, number. Okay. Are there any questions? Oh, I'm over now. Five minutes. Okay. Um, then that's it for me today. Uh, this was public key cryptography. Uh, so what we did today was public key cryptography. Next time, we're just going to do a little cleanup stuff. We'll do a couple more things. Um, oh, oh, by the way, looking it up later. Yes, yeah, someone just said they would look it up later. The, the Wikipedia article for this is actually really good. Okay, so uh, let me put that in there. Um, uh, the Wikipedia article, and you'll see, I didn't use the ones that they used. I actually looked it up ahead of time to make sure I wasn't. Um, but the Wikipedia article for this particular type of key exchange is really good. Um, um, and it'll talk about the cryptographic explanation and everything. Uh, this lecture is fair game. Wednesday's lecture is not fair game. All right. Wednesday's lecture. So Wednesday's quiz is fair game. Okay. Uh, this is the good Wikipedia article. Uh, a couple things, though, about that article when you're reading it. When they say um, mod multiplicative groups of integers, modulus, whatever, forget about that. Don't worry about it. Um, we'll talk about it later. When they say primitive root, that simply means that you're able to generate, like I said before. Uh, that's all they mean. Um, so I don't have something where I only cycle, where I cycle, uh, the, the exponent cycles over uh, P minus 1, not, uh, not something less. Okay, um, so that's the link to the article. Um, obviously, it'll be in the notes. Um, the exam covers everything that made it on test one. So if I didn't talk about it on test one, right, even if I covered it beforehand. Um, now, it includes, le no, it doesn't because we did a test review. It would include lecture 7B except we did a test review. And a reminder that there's a test review on Wednesday uh, evening for this class um, at 7 p.m. Uh, so I'm going to keep going with the stuff. I have a test review at 7 p.m. that will be, um, you will be able to get that um, after if you can't make the 7 p.m. Now, the, the stuff that's on the quiz for Thursday definitely is on the test. The stuff that we're going to cover on Thursday after the quiz is not. Okay. So after the quiz on Thursday, I'm going to try to do RSA. I may only do what the algorithm says. Um, so we're going to get a little bit more number theory. Um, so on Wednesday, I'm sorry, not Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday, next time. Um, I am going to try to do RSA. We may not make it because I may have to cut it short. Um, but next time, what we're going to do is we're going to do a, um, uh, a little more number theory needed for RSA. If I don't make it to RSA and have to cut it, um, you need this number theory anyway for your course, for your classes. Um, so we're going to do things like uh, Fermat's Little Theorem. Um, and we're going to start introducing um, induction and recursion. Um, and as I said, if I don't make it all the way to RSA, it'll, it'll break my heart, but we'll make it. Um, I did give you a study guide. Uh, the quizzes to study are everything is fair game. So I didn't write down the list of the quizzes. Um, so all of the quiz. So what is what is on test two? Test one plus every quiz we've done since test one. Not every quiz problem ever. You don't need to study the ones that didn't make it on test one. So you take test one and then everything that we've done since. Okay. Um, and we'll go over a little bit more on Wednesday. Uh, but it's, uh, but if, again, if a question didn't make it on test one, 
Um, and it was then, don't worry about it. If I wanted to ask it on test two, and it was material from the stuff before test one, but I didn't ask it on test one, I would have put it in another quiz during this time. So if it didn't show up on a quiz before test, you know, if it didn't show up on 8A, 8B, or, you know, sorry, if it didn't show up on anything, if it didn't show up at 5A, 5B, et cetera, et cetera, on well, 5A was the survey, but if it didn't show up at since 5B, um, uh, and it wasn't on test one, then you don't need to worry about it. But if it was on test one, or if it was on a quiz since 5B, you need to study it. All right. Okay, and then remember that I can ask you questions about theorems and stuff like that. So you don't need to memorize the proofs, but you need to read them. And definitely binomial will be on there. All right, because binomial is actually really important for this little more number theory that we're about to do, because you need it for RSA. Um, anything else? Okay, well, that's it for me. I'll talk to you later.